Alright, we'll see how this goes. It is 4.16 in the afternoon. I'm in Gallagher, West Virginia. I think it's near exit 74 on Interstate um, 64. This is some really awesome country to come through. Uh, it can be taxing at times if you're hauling a really heavy load. Luckily right now I've only got 23,000 pounds worth of plastic on the back of my truck. So it makes it a little bit easier getting through the hills. A little bit more enjoyable. Not having to uh, travel as slowly as uh, I uh, sometimes do. Let's get out and I may come right back into the truck depending on the noise outside. It's hard to tell. And uh, we'll show you what I got. I'm doing a load check at the same time here. Oh. Uh, my favorite um, plastic pipe. One thing I've found that has made these loads a lot easier to transport is the good old half twist in the old four inch strap. Um, what that does is it prevents it from, if you were not to put, if I did, let's say if I didn't put the half twist in these straps, no matter how tight I get them, they still flap in the wind. By putting the half twist in there, they don't flap. They don't compress and release and compress and release umpteen thousand times while I'm traveling down the highway causing uh, what I consider a lot of movement in the load. And uh, it looks like everything is is staying pretty stable. Um, this is the way it was loaded. You can see how it's got a uh, flange on the end so they can't stack it end to end. It's kind of uh, inter interwoven in there. Some of these pieces right here are very thin and even and so my straps are, are not as tight as they usually are because if I tighten them much more they'll just completely pinch these pipes in half uh, because of how thin they are. Let's see if we can if you can see how how thin this is compared to here's a good comparison thin regular thickness on most PVC pipe. If it was this thick for this diameter of pipe I'd be tightening a lot tighter. Um, I want to say I've, I've traveled about uh, four hours with this load, maybe less, three to four hours. Done a couple of load checks and I'm actually doing a half hour break in this beautiful uh, rest stop area. I love the mountains. This makes me want to get back to Washington State because there, um, even though it's, it's a communist state, it's not as hot. <laughs> they have evergreen trees. Um, see if I can hold this steady. You might be able to catch some shots of some cool looking trucks. Who knows? I've been following, I've been uh, traveling along the road with a, there was a, what I would consider a, I don't know if crazy is too powerful of a, a word to describe a truck driver, but he was all over the place. I mean, I can hear other people on the on the CB um, discussing his driving techniques and providing a little of uh, a little critique on the radio. Um, <laughs> maybe a lot of critique. Um, so that's what I got going on now. I've only got I've got seven hours to get to where I need to deliver, but I've only got. Let's see if I can do this without messing up the shot too much for you. I've got four hours and 17 minutes left on my clock that I can use today. So I'll gain a little bit of time once my half hour break is done. And that'll just allow me to be have a little bit more flexibility when I'm parking. Um, so I don't run out of time and get uh, uh, as far as I want. I, I haven't picked out parking yet. So we'll see how that goes. This appointment doesn't deliver until 2.30 tomorrow. Which, yeah. It, it, <sighs> Um, and tomorrow's Friday, and I'm going to Romulus, Michigan, and I believe that's about eight and a half hours from my house. So if I'm having to drive three to four hours tomorrow um, to deliver this, 
at, for a 2.30 appointment, that means um, odds are if I do make it home for the weekend, which I am crossing my fingers, I always do, um, I may not make it home until Saturday. So we'll see what happens. Um, to clarify some questions about my last video about the Air Force, um, people have been, a lot of the comments I've seen, which are, I, I appreciate all the kind words. Um, people ask, why didn't I go into the, the, become a paramedic or do something in the medical career field for which I am highly qualified to do? I agree. I am uber qualified in the medical career field. The problem is with, with some, not all, but um, some career fields in the Air Force, they do not, let's, let's take my career field. It doesn't translate well over to the civilian side. And why is that, you may ask? I don't know. People are crazy. Um, because I've, I, I'm trying to think, I've done everything in the medical career field. I, I <laughs> let me clarify that. Um, I've done everything from a blood pressure to inserting IVs, drawing blood, intubating, uh, 12 lead EKGs. I'm certified in uh, audiometry for doing hearing tests, um, CPR certified, EMT, basic uh, qualifications. And that's, that's the key there as to why that because when I'm practicing medicine <laughs> sound like a doctor which I am not I uh, can do the the Air Force gives me medics there's a lot of leeway in the sense that you know I'm trained to do these medical um, techniques on other military members they train us heavily on the things that we can do and we're proficient and do them well well, on the civilian side, in order to get a job, let's say even as a medical assistant, which I do not qualify for, amazingly enough, um, because I don't have a, a medical assistant certification or training. Now, I can do 700 times more than a medical assistant can do on the civilian side, but I don't have the acceptable or approved training that they would say, oh yeah, you are medically assistant qualified or paramedic. Um, I used to travel in helicopters with so, and find patients on the ground, lower get lowered by a cable, take care of their medical needs, insert IVs, uh, give uh, morphine IV under the direction of uh, medical direction, bandage uh, bandage them up, put them in a, a basket. They get hoisted up to a helicopter and we take them to a hospital. Um, but I can't get a job on the civilian side as a life flight helicopter medic because I am not a uh, paramedic. I'm just an EMT basic. So there's some. Th they're trying to make some changes in the Air Force for the medical career field, for the career field I was in, trying to fix that to where when you get out, you can do the same things on the civilian side that you did in the military. But right now, when the time I left, no, that wasn't the case. So right now, even with all my massive amounts of qualifications, I can drive an ambulance and that's about it. And that's why I didn't go in the medical career field because medical amb uh, ambulance drivers make squat, diddly squat as far as money is concerned. Um, and I don't want to go through um, a paramedic course to spend the time and effort to complete whatever training requirements they have in order to be labeled as a paramedic for stuff I've already done and already do and I'm already knowledgeable in. Um, it just It's a complete waste of time for me and I'm not interested in that. Um, so that's so the main reason why I'm not doing anything in the medical field right now is because funny thing enough is is on the outside in the civilian world they think I'm not qualified based on uh, certifications to be able to do those things. <laughs>